Hey everyone, Shane here with ROA Off-Road. We are on a Roamer adventure in Colorado. And one of my favorite things about the adventures and the rallies that we do is that we get to get with owners of other campers in the community, right? And a lot of people have unique situations and have different ideas on what to do and how to upgrade their campers. So to me, like, don't you think that's kind of the most valuable thing with the community? Yeah. Is learning from other people and what they've done, yeah, right? Yeah, sharing, learning, and having fun with everybody and seeing them upgrades that people do and just making the trailers more personal. Yeah. To, to fit your own lifestyle. Yeah, and everybody's situation is different, so they do things differently, but yeah. sometimes you get inspired and you're like, oh, yeah. that's yeah. a great idea. Exactly. And then, well, if you start using it for a while, then you begin to see, well, I wish we had more battery, or oh, I wish we had more solar, or we need more water, whatever it might be. And then you can start taking care of those things, and pretty soon you get you know, the thing just dialed in for what you want to do yourself. Yeah, and I think that's the benefit of, you know, you know, opposed to just getting a trailer f from a dealer and just transacting, getting out and by yourself, you know, we try to create a community where yeah. you can go to get together. Yeah, with getting the it is the starting point and then the community develops and then, you, and then you begin to see what would make your trip more fun or convenient or something and then and then you begin to develop these personal friends like like with Kat and Bartold and here we are at Serendipity Ranch you know just out of the blue yeah Great. having fun yeah not, not too much out of the blue don't tell Angela's out of the blue she's done a lot of work to get this <laughs> For figured out. out right yeah exactly. no but so and, and it's fun and John has some he has a what do you have you have the Explore X22 and how many mods have you done uh, put, uh, close to 50. Okay. If you include the splatted bugs on the front, but that's because those weren't there when I got it. <laughs> so you have done some changes and some upgrades uh, yeah, with the bugs uh, on the front. Uh, a few changes, yeah. Well, no, and so this, I thought this would be a really great thing is because, you know, at ROA, we always are doing our, uh, we do mods, um, but then people go off and they do their own things. Mm -hmm. And John is, uh, are you famous or infamous? In infamous, the, I hope. Uh, <laughs> in, <laughs> in the community of the Explore, in our Roamer community, he's on a lot of forums and, and a really, really smart guy. And he's done some incredible things. And we thought, hey, it would be really fun since we're all together. I mean, this is our last day. Some people have left and, t you know, we wanted to get with John and have him do a full rig walk around and he can show you the mods and then jordan will try to get some nice good footage for people to learn how to do this stuff mm -hmm. right right and you can explain and help them out and i think this will be a great value add to anybody who's interested in an explore or yes. anything because yeah. most of these mods are not just you could do this to any camper right yeah that's right well we just wanted some simple upgrades to make things a little bit better and we can sort of get into that as we as we get started here yeah let's walk around okay well i thought maybe we'd start up here in the front we use this trailer a lot and I've gotten really used to stopping in all different kinds of terrain and towing it over obstacles and whatnot. And so I tried to make this whole front end as convenient as possible and able to articulate and whatnot. So the first thing I did was add this McHitch. And this has a full articulation in every direction and it's really easy to hook up and it's very durable. So that's, that's a nice mod. Yeah, so the, the original jack that came with this was a simple telescoping jack that, that sits on a, on a bolt or a, sits on a, a pin that, that's mounted on the tongue. And it, it's kind of wobbly and it only has about maybe eight or 10 inches of travel. So if you're on a slope, it's better if you can devise something with more travel. So what this one has, this ultimate jack, it's called an ultimate jack, is that the outer tube pins in all different positions. So you just rotate this knob and slide the, the outer part to wherever you want it, repin it, and then you can jack it up or down. So it gives you much more travel and it's more stable. And so what I did in this case was I cut off that bracket that was that it just slid over and built this um, this bracket for it that, that grabs onto the frame. So it made it it made it very strong. And then also this one, you can take the the foot off and put a wheel on it. So I have a dual wheel um, that'll that'll pin on the bottom of there for recovery purposes. So you, if you if you're hooked up and the trailer is stuck or you're in the mud or something, you have to disconnect and do something. Either you have to turn around at the end of a one lane road where there's no way to turn it around with the truck or you're stuck in the mud and you have to disconnect and yank it out of there with a winch. So you just drop that plate off, pin this plate or pin this wheel on instead. And now you've got a really strong caster wheel. You can set this down and drag the trailer around. 
So if you're at the end of a one lane road on a dirt road or something, you can, you can put one of those BAL locks, like on that side, put this wheel on and you can pull the trailer around in its own length, turn it right around in its own length, using the truck to do it. And then when you get turned around, you just take the chalk off and off you go. You could use this to roll the trailer around, but it, that's impractical. It's, it's heavy and we don't really want it to roll around. So that's probably not gonna work unless you just want to scoot it three feet in your garage or something. I just use the plate all the time, but this is very useful and it's strong. I forget what this is rated for, but it's rated for a lot. So these lock the two wheels together. This is a um, deluxe tire locking chalk. There's two different models of these. BAL, it's, it's kind of hard to read it, but it's BAL deluxe tire locking chalk. And they make two different kinds, but this is the only one that's made to take a load. The other one is just made to, I don't know, stabilize or something, but these are made to lock the wheels together. Let's walk over there and I'll show you how they work. Jack, let's go around the back here and I'll show you how to install it. So when you're, if you're parked in a place that's precarious and you're, you know, you're just worried about the trailer backing off of an edge or something, well, you just put these on and tighten that down a little bit and it is not gonna roll, period. So I carry two of those all the time and I can lock both sides. So if we're parked, you know, we have been parked near the Grand Canyon, for instance, where it's on a slope and, you know, there's an edge and stuff and, you know, it's, it's nerve wracking. Chalks are good, but they're only so good. But that thing is really good. Super quick, easy, and it's absolute. And then for charging, what I've done is I've added an Anderson plug, similar to what a lot of the other Australian trailers have. I've added this and that charges the batteries from the truck. So in case we, you know, it's bad weather or whatever. And it's funny, but with this one, I don't, I don't use the stabilizers. I've never used them since we had the trailer. And I just don't really feel the need for it. So this thing is stable enough that we just uh, stop, drop the jack, and there we are. So one of the things that currently is, seems to be going on with the trailers is people are concerned about theft. And there's been a number of trailers that have been stolen and nobody sees them again. And, and people are just worried about it. You know, they're so, they're so nice to have. And if you're out in the BLM land or something and you, you, you want to go look at a waterfall or something, it's, it's always a concern about leaving the trailer behind. And so one of the things about these, aside from how easy they are to operate, is that it, it's incompatible with any other kind of connector on the truck. So if somebody wants to steal it, they're going to have to figure out a way to do that, to hook up to it. And the only way really to do that would be to use the safety chains and a terrible connection to just dangle it there. So even with the safety chains, all you have to do with this one is you just pull the pin and drop the chains off and you throw the chains inside and the, even the chains aren't there. So this is a real easy modification that even makes it just a little bit more theft resistant. And then on this particular X-22, I took the propane tanks off and moved them to the back so I could have a separate storage up here, have two storage boxes. And um, also, um, it's just important to have a high lift jack and I wanted the weight forward on, on most of the mods. So I have this high lift jack stanchion mounted inside the box through a tube and that can just slide out and get used real easy. The parts are in the other box. In order to get the jack completely out of the way, and move whatever weight it has forward on the trailer, I, I devised this system where it slides inside of a stainless steel tube. So what you do, if you ever want to deploy it, you just simply pull these pins, there's two of them, and then this just slides right out, and there you go. When you get done, you just slide it back in, drop the pins back in, and it, it cannot escape. And then the mechanism, the foot and the jacking mechanism, just ride in the other storage box with all the other mechanical parts. So it's really easy to just pull it out, drop it in its foot, slide the, the jacking mechanism on and off you go. It doesn't take, you know, 10 seconds to get it ready to go. But meanwhile, it's completely out of the way and nobody, again, nobody's going to try to steal it because the typical way is that they're mounted on the back of the trailer and all you have to do is take a wing nut off and you've got it. This one, no, you know, like, what, how does that work? So it's, it's safer and it's out of the way, the weight's forward and down low. You don't, I don't even think about it unless I need it. And that's got the jack parts, the, the foot, the mechanism, 
It's got the wheel, it's got the BAL locks, it's got a tow rope to, that I can tow with or I can turn the trailer around with if I have to. And I usually have a snatch block in here too, so I can I can tie the snatch block onto a tree and run the run the rope from the front of the, the hitch over through the snatch block and then back to the truck. And then when I lock one side, I can just drive around and the trailer will turn around in its own length. So those are some of the things that that you know, just simple mods really that make this really convenient to use up front, easy to hook up. We've got blocks in here, so every time we stop, we can pull out leveling blocks real easy. It's just, just convenience, you know? So come on around the back, I'll show you some stuff there. Just for the fun of it, we added a little dirt to the wheels too, you know, you wouldn't want to go off road without that. I ordered this trailer without the uh, roof air conditioner and I put this one through the back wall. And the reason I did that is because I wanted more area on the roof for solar panels and um, I wanted a lower uh, electrical draw on the air conditioner than the stock one. So this one works really well and it runs off of the battery. So we, we, we don't even plug in. This trailer is completely off grid and, uh, and we can run the air conditioner as we want. So if you're out on the highway or something, stop for lunch or whatever, you can just go in and turn on the air conditioner and hang out at a rest area if you need to. And, um, and you can get a little bit of a, a view of the panels up there. There's 660 watts of glass panels on the roof. And when I got the trailer, I, I deleted the tent from the order so that I could put that up there. And then it just worked marvelously. So then here's the propane that was on the front. Now it's on the back. And then I got a new window that's the same window that's on the front of the trailer and mounted it here. And this really opened up the, the view from inside the trailer and great, good ventilation at night and whatnot. So these, these simple modifications are really make the trailer so much more convenient and livable. Well, we had a coyote we raised from a baby and was our, and lived with us for uh, quite a while and uh, was our, our dog and our friend and our pet, went with us everywhere, went camping with us and lived and, and with us and, and uh, was part of the family for quite a while and really touched us deeply. And this is based on a photo of her out one night just howling like they like to do in the middle of the night. And we had that decal made from that photograph. So we always think of her when we're out doing stuff. And then down here, I put in a, uh, a quick connect for running the fire pit or running the, the uh, Blackstone grill or whatever. That's really handy. I added this uh, tire table. This is a great mod. It simulates an outdoor kitchen like some of the trailers have. And it just folds flat, goes in the truck, disappears. And, uh, but it works great for cooking outside. And then also this uh, drop-down lifestyle shelf. This is so convenient really a great ad I think and then the steps originally were a fold down step that came inside the trailer and went down to the ground but they had to be adjusted a lot so I switched over to this uh, little giant two-step and that just works great you can put it inside and it rides in there with no problem and you can use it for other things if you need to reach something in the truck or whatever so that works out very well and then up front again on this side got an air filter up here. What this does is it draws air into the trailer to pressurize the trailer when we're on extremely dusty roads to keep dust out of the trailer. And it acts as a water separator and a high, it's, it's up here where it's getting clean air at a high pressure area as we're moving along. So it filters the air, takes water out of the air and sends it into the trailer to keep the air clean in the trailer while we're underway on dusty roads. Another thing I added was this screen door rail. This, this beefs up the, the door, makes it so it's harder to break the screen, and it allows you to pull the door closed when it's latched to the big door. It's a very nice thing, really handy for coming in and out, and you can hang towels on it and whatnot. And then just to help pull the door closed, instead of pulling on the latch, I added this piece here so we can, from inside, we can pull it closed and actually latch it. It works very well. Outside, it's just, just a couple of bolt heads, and that's it. I think that's mostly it for the major things on the outside of the trailer. And then we can go in and have a look if you'd like. And I'll show you these uh, wonderful little additions that these just are great camping gear, and you know, it's fun to walk around on them. So, anyway, come on in. There's a lot of modifications that were done inside the trailer, and some of them are very simple little things, but they just make life nicer. 
And one of them is when you come up to the trailer at night, you open up the door, you can't see in here to find the switches or you're not sure where to step. So I've added these little LED night lights that glow red and they, they light up the steps, they light up the interior and they light up the switch panel so that whenever you come in, you can find your way in at night. And it's just a simple thing, but it, it just seems to really make it more livable. And then we've got some of these uh, wonderful little folding hooks here. They fold completely out of the way and stay out of the way all the time. But when you want them, there they are. And each one will support 40 pounds. It's really handy. So come on in, I'll show you around a little bit. Well, when you're just sitting around the table at night and you want to have a little bit of light but while blasting everything, you can just have these little lamps that have different colors and, and they're just really convenient. You can set that anywhere you want. So we have yellow, white, cool white, or brighter in between warm light or off, rechargeable. And then I took this cup and screwed it down here. So you just drop things in here you want. It can't fall off of there. So we drive with it there all the time. So convenient. You can just drop a bottle of water in there. or You can put the TV remote and your flashlight in there. And everything stays there while you're underway just fine. And it's right at your fingertips if you want it. And then here's the view of the window that I mentioned outside. It just really opens up the back of the trailer and brings in a lot of light or ventilation. And there's the air conditioner. That, that we saw on the back. And then swinging around over to here, I've just added some simple things in the kitchen to make this convenient, like an indoor-outdoor thermometer and, a, and a, a clock, and of course, paper towels and whatnot. But also I added these, this whole backsplash and uh, stainless steel backsplash and, and heat shield here. And also this cutting board is nice thick cutting board so you can work on here without cutting the counter and it, it fits in any way you want to fit it in. It's got a shelf around in here that will support it just fine, but um, there's not a size you can buy that'll drop right in there of that size. So you buy a bigger one and cut it to fit. And if you cut it right, it'll fit any way you want it. It'll fit upside down, right side up, sideways, whatever you want, it'll always drop in. And if you get the three quarter inch thick one, then that means that when you're cutting here, you're not cutting on this surface at all. So if you get one that's only as thick as this, you're gonna get knife scarring, I think, on, on the countertop, but not with this. Plus it's strong. Aerator, sprayer. So you can, you can have a standard flow or you can have a spray and it swivels. It, it's a tremendous improvement over just a straight thing. And it screws right on with no modifications. You spin the one off, spin this one on, you're out of here. This silverware holder is really nice. Uh, there was no silverware drawer in this trailer, so I made these out of these cups and corian and, and stainless sheet. And then up in the uh, cabinet here, I've added this microwave and these tubes for storing things. So that makes a really nice storage area and organizes everything just fine. That works really well. So when I ordered the trailer, I ordered it without a roof air conditioner that they come with, but I ordered it wired for one. And instead of the air conditioner, we got this Max fan. This is a wonderful addition to this trailer because we have these two fans and this lets in light and it's much smaller footprint on the roof. So if you're interested in having more solar, this is a good way to do that. And I've found that we really don't miss the roof air conditioner at all. And then in the bathroom, I, I put this room divider up. This is a room divider like it's used in hospitals and whatnot, and they come with these wonderful little rollers so that the, uh, we took out the glass door and made a lot more room in here and put in the shower curtain, and it just glides on this roller really nicely. And then I, these convenient little um, shampoo and shower gel dispenser, so much better than having soap and bottles sitting all around and everything. No, it's all right there, no problem. And then if you look a little further in here, you can see this is the lower flow shower hence so the water will last longer. And I also adjusted the water heater output temperature. And that's really an important thing because they come set at about 120 degrees and it's too hot. Good for doing dishes maybe, but it's too hot for showering. So you just open up this thing, pull the cover off right here. You just take these two screws out and that comes away. And inside of there, there's dips, the four little dip switches and you just adjust, to, adjust them to the temperature you want. I think there's four different settings you can have, and they come stock at a 120, but it's better if you make it 108. They'll use less propane, and it's, and it's better for showering. And then if you look a little further in here, you can see this is the inside of the pressurizing, the positive pressure system for the trailer for clean air inside. 
Outside was that filter that I talked about. This is where the blower is inside, just directly in from that, that filter unit. So we just turn this on when we're gonna be on a trail that's dusty. And then when we get there, we turn it off and it's fine. Oh, and then the f the f one other point is we put in this uh, separate brand, tiny model toilet. This is a waterless toilet and it it's, uh, fits in here very nicely. And it's very simple and easy to use. The brand of the toilet is separate and the model is tiny. And there's two different tiny models. One of them has a pee bottle that you can just take out and dump. And the other one has a pipe coming out so you can route the pee to wherever you want. And what I did was I routed it to the gray tank. So we don't have to deal with that at all. We just dump the gray tank and that takes care of it all. So the only thing you deal with in the toilet is the solids. And it's very simple because it's just a lift out bag that you just pull out and toss. And then you can buy these bags from on Amazon, for instance. These are just glad bags and 80 in a box. And they're about three or four cents a piece. And that's all you need. So that, those are the mods for the bath, I guess. Keep the doors closed. Just to screw a hook on here and anchor it over there and just put a piece of string on it. It seems like it's about as foolproof as you can get. You don't have to drill into the doors at all. You don't have to come up with a hook or anything. You just, just this little screw in thing and that's all there is to it. And then I put a, a 90 on here so that this, this TV cable was out of the way of the paper towels. Then I added a cigarette lighter socket on the side so I can run, you know, the, uh, I've got a DVD player in there. And up in this cabinet here, I added a plug and I added the um, cell booster unit. So I, I got a new TV and I raised it up five inches so it's much closer to this surface. A little heating pad, it's not full size of bed, it's, you know, some size where it's obviously your feet are on it and, and that works out very well. Yeah, the back scratcher mod, that's one of the easiest mods I've done, and it uh, works out very well. It's very convenient. Let's see, there's, there's a number of little things, but I think that's the majority of them. Yeah, okay, I think that's it, Jordan. Let's go back outside and uh, meet up with Shane. I think we're finished here. Okay. Well, thank right. you. Sure, Shane. It was good having you and, and showing you everything. And. Uh, you know, thanks for all you've done. And yes, thank yeah, you. We'll thanks see, for we'll see you. letting everybody see this. And uh, don't forget to, if you have any questions, now's the time to make a comment below. And I'm sure John will answer or yeah. we can answer. Yeah, I'll follow up or Shane will follow up and we can sh show you where to get things or give you some help if you need a little something with how to do certain things or whatever. Yeah, and like, subscribe and all that good stuff too. So thank you so much. Have a wonderful day. Talk to you later. See ya. See ya. One thing I forgot to mention when we were looking at this uh, outdoor table is that we brought uh, Hula Girl and Drinking Bird with us. And so those are kind of fun little companions to have along, add a little bit of life to the whole thing. Well, I'm trying to come up with a good spice rack. Uh, and you know, the, the criteria is it has to be able to ride along the trailer without things bouncing out. And it, and it has to have a uniform style container that you can you know refill or whatever and put it in there. And, uh, and it's something that matches with white and stainless and stuff. So um, it's, it's just an empty spot that, that it's missing as a spice rack. I haven't figured out how to do that yet, but I'll, I'll get, come up with something that'll work there, I think. Get some ideas going. That's a good place to store material there, store uh, spices. So this is part of the splatted bug mod. Uh, it, uh, it's one of the easiest modifications you can do, and, it, and, it, and you can do it underway. It's another nice feature about it. So you can actually head to camp and get that one handled uh, on the way. And the trailers don't come with them, so you have to do that yourself. And uh, so count it in your list of, of modifications you've done to your trailer. And, yeah, and it demonstrates that the trailer actually does get used, used and not just sit out in the rain or something. So uh, anyway.